Hello, this is Jason with BDI, and in this video I'm going to go over the hardware tab within STS Live. Now for this video I'm running STS Live version 1.4, and as you can see I've got two nodes that are connected with a couple different sensors that are uh, plugged into each of these nodes here. So within the hardware tab, this is where I go to get any information about the connected hardware, the nodes or the sensors or the base stations or clickers or anything that I have connected to the system. So to uh, look at that information, all I have to do is click on the item and over on the right hand side, I'm going to get an information pane that has all the information available for that uh, node or sensor. So when you click on a node, it's going to have one pane and then when you click on a sensor, It'll have a uh, different pane that gives you information about that sensor. Now I'm going to make a, a little bit more advanced video about uh, setting up the options for nodes and sensors. So in this video, I'm just going to do a, a high-level overview of the different items that are on this tab here. So with when you click on a uh, a node, you see that there's uh, different items in the in the columns that indicate the uh, state of that node there. Uh, same thing for when you click on a sensor. Well, I guess uh, I should note that to uh, see the information about the sensors, you want to change the view to the uh, sensor view, and then uh, you can click on that sensor, and you'll have your information in the information pane about the uh, calibration file, and then you'll also have the, uh, the information for the sensor um, as you're taking a test. So when a test is stopped, this information is not going to update. Um, or at least the uh, current sample, maximum minimum sample, will no longer update. You'll still have the uh, location um, that was saved in from the last time that a test was run. So to see this information update, uh, you want to start a test. And in this view, you can visualize the uh, values for each of the sensor um, by looking at the current sample. Um, you have a maximum and a minimum sample and uh, other information associated with that particular sensor. So if it has a, a thermistor or any sort of temperature measurement, you'll see a temperature, you'll see excitation voltage, the calibration factors, the gains, and the uh, offsets of each of those sensors, um, as well as uh, the units, the types, just any information that, that uh, you'd have is just listed here in a list style of viewing for these sensors. Now you can always click over to the um, plots tab and visualize the data on the plots window, um, but this offers a little bit different style of uh, viewing the, the data as it comes in from those sensors while you're taking a test. So uh, I had that test set to run for uh, 15 seconds, so it ran for 15 seconds to stop, so I can start another test. Um, when I start a test, I see that I have a test health indicator icon. When I open this up, this indicates um, how much data is backlogged on the nodes. So this number is usually relatively small. Uh, depending on how many nodes you have in the network, um, you might see it going up to you know, a couple seconds or so, but it'll buffer back in and that number will continue to uh, go down. And then when the test stops, that window will go away because there won't be any, uh, uh, any data left in the nodes to uh, buffer back in. So to uh, continue with information about the uh, connected hardware tab, there is a uh, start and uh, test pane over here. So this is where the uh, start test button is. Um, this is a sensor scan button. When you hit the sensor scan, it scans all the nodes for connected sensors. So I haven't changed any of these sensors, so th it's going to stay the same when I hit the uh, sensor scan button. But if you were to change the location of any of the sensors, uh, what you want to do is hit the sensor scan button, and that'll update it in the system of where you've changed that uh, sensor to. Now this icon is a uh, test preview icon. Um, when you hit the test preview icon, it's going to start a preview test. This is good for uh, zeroing sensors or checking to see that you're getting valid data before actually starting a data acquisition test. Um, so if you click this button, it'll show you uh, data coming in from your sensors, but it will actually not be saved to the hard drive as indicated by this icon here. So um, this started a... Uh, uh, preview and no data is being saved to the hard drive as opposed to a uh, actual data acquisition test. When you hit the uh, green start button there, you'll see that you get the green check and you're actually getting data saved to the hard drive.
So we have the uh, low power modes over here. Um, if you're running a test and you want to try to conserve the battery life of the nodes, what you can do is put them in standby mode by clicking on the light bulb icon here. So when you do click on this uh, icon, if we switch back to the nodes tab, we can see that uh, the icon has changed to this little light bulb, which means that they're in standby mode. So in standby modes, the nodes will turn off their voltage power supplies to the sensors. So they no longer power any of the sensors. Um, it still keeps the node on and connected. Um, and the nodes can operate in very low power when they're not um, having to power any of the sensors. And this allows you to save uh, battery life between tests. So if you have to set up and run a test and then uh, just be in standby mode for 10 minutes to a couple hours, you can put it in standby mode and you won't be powering the sensors. So you know, your batteries will last considerably longer. And the nice thing about this mode is, is it wakes up instantly. So as soon as you hit the button, um, everything comes back. All the sensors are powered back up and you're ready to start a test immediately. So the other low power mode is the uh, sleep mode. So what you can do is put the nodes to sleep for a given amount of time. Um, there's two different options here. You can actually program in a time. So if I wanted to sleep for two minutes, I could set it to two minutes here or two hours and two minutes or whatever you feel like for making it sleep. Or I could do a calendar sleep so I can actually predefine when I want the nodes to wake up. So. Um, this is best for if you have the nodes set up one day and you finish testing and you want the nodes to go into the lowest power mode and not use any battery power until the next day, you can put them to sleep overnight and tell them to wake up uh, the next day. So what I can do is program this to wake up the next day. We can change this to uh, 5 a.m. So they're ready to go bright and early in the morning. This indicates that they're going to go to sleep for 11 hours and 59 minutes. So when you put them to sleep for this long, that's the same as just having them turned off for 11 hours and 59 minutes. So if they need to be out for a couple days during testing, it's best to use this overnight or in between periods where, you know, if you know you're going to step away for lunch for a couple hours, you can put them to sleep for a couple hours and then wake them back up. So uh, in this mode, it'll sleep for 11 hours and 58 minutes, and then it'll go into a snooze cycle. So what it'll do is when it comes out of this cycle, if, uh, if they can't check into STS Live, they'll try to connect for a minute, and if they can't connect, they're going to go back to sleep for two minutes. And they'll wake up again, they'll try to connect for a minute, and then go back to sleep for two minutes. And so this is uh, this allows them to stay in the lowest power mode for as long as possible. So since these are set to wake up at 5 in the morning, I might not show up until uh, 6 in the morning. So, you know, these would go into that um, sleep state, or in, in, uh, I'm sorry, the snooze state for about an hour and still conserve uh, battery. Not as much as if they were completely asleep, but more so than if they were just turned on for for that hour. So I'm going to set this to actually run and I will confirm that they're going to go to sleep. So a couple things have changed on the uh, screen here. So we see that they have moons indicating that the nodes are asleep. Uh, if you were to look at the physical node, you would notice that there's no longer any blue flashing light on the uh, nodes. They are asleep. Um, they have a sun icon and we have a calendar at the top of STS Live that indicates when these nodes are programmed to wake up. So if I click the sun, this is confirming that I'm going to have a wake up initiated. So in order to get the nodes to wake up um, and check back into STS Live and not go into the uh, sleep cycle, this is what I'd hit. I'd hit the screen check here and this now indicates that these nodes are scheduled to come out of sleep mode in 11 hours and 57 minutes and uh, go into their their standard um, awake state. So usually what would happen in this case is uh, I would not have checked that. I would have just closed STS Live and, uh, and walked away for a couple hours to get some sleep and then come back and I would turn on STS Live. And when STS Live turns on, um, none of this will be indicated. You just have to know that those nodes were programmed to wake up in 11 hours and they're going to be awake at 5 in the morning. So I would turn STS Live on and uh, I would wait, you know, assuming that it's after 5 in the morning, I would wait for them to come out of their sleep cycle and connect back into live. So once nodes are in this mode, in the sleep mode, uh, they will 
they'll only wake up for two reasons. So either one, the countdown timer is counted all the way down and uh, they'll wake up. Or you can go over and actually uh, manually turn them on by holding down the silver power button on top of the node to turn the node back on. So uh, I'm actually going to uh, let these nodes sleep for now. And that'll be it for the settings tab. I'm sorry, the uh, connected hardware tab for STS Live.